A Boy Scout rally at Crystal Palace in 1909 may not seem the most obvious birthplace for the girl guides. This was, after an all, an era where skirts were ankle length and ladies didn't run. But a small group of girls demanding entry to the rally proved to be the catalyst for today's movement. History doesn't relate exactly how many Girl Scouts turned up, but they obviously made quite an impression, as within months they had their own name and programme. Bain and Powell chose the name Girl Guides after the famous Guide Corps in India, and it didn't take long for them to make an impact. By 1910, Bain and Powell's sister Agnes had adapted Scouting for Boys for the Girl Guides use, and the Guide movement was born. Later that year, the first guide unit in Cardiff was opened at St Saviour's Church in Roth. So what age did you start guiding and where? I started being a brownie um, at Pax, three, Pax Hill in, um, in England when I had been left with my paternal grandparents yeah. for a few years yeah. to come to school here. When? I don't know. It must have been about eight and a half, I think. Okay. Eight and three quarters. Um, so what are your memories of that time, like starting guiding? What do you think of it? Well, I thought it was great because there were these big girls who played with us. Yeah. And it was great fun. Um, and What good memories and what exciting moments do you remember having? In, like all the in, guiding? Um, well, in, I can't remember anything else much about brownies, but in, in guides, um, it was tremendous fun. I loved camping. Um, we went to a camp in East Sussex, and uh, well, my mother was before they went back to Africa and left us. And uh, it was pouring with rain. Mm -hmm. It was a thoroughly soggy camp, mud everywhere. But I do remember in being in a huge marquee and singing songs and thinking, this is wonderful. <laughs> so what skills um, did you get in your six on patrol and have you taken any of these into life? In the I never could get to grips properly with semaphore and knots, but uh, um, the, those sort of skills, until I really, till I had to teach them and I got much better at it when I was actually teaching them as a guider and, and as a Cub Scout leader. Um, but I enjoyed trying to learn. <laughs> what age did you start guiding and where? Um, well, I was a guide uh, and then I was evacuated and joined in the unit up there. And that was, uh, let me think, 1940. September the 3rd, 1940, I was bombed out. <laughs> and so we had to be moved. the Brownie Pack in 1948. That's the 72nd Cardiff at Alvin Road Baptist. And do you have any memories of that time? Memories? Many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think now. It's, we had a very mixed pack, well for years. As the brownies, I think at one stage I counted in the brownie pack uh, 16 different nationalities. So uh, we were a very mixed group of uh, girls, but they were all marvellous. We had those with disabilities and they joined in everything just exactly the same as the others. Uh, I can remember Tanny Gray Thompson, she came on a pack holiday. And she went, we were down the Mumbles, and she went onto the sands, was pushed down the beach, and hmm, was buried in the sands, <laughs> and thoroughly enjoyed herself. And she was able to do all sorts of things, just exactly the same as any other brownie. And were there any other exciting memories that you have? Any moments that were really exciting for you? Oh, lots and lots. Uh, I travelled from Wales, taking film of the Queen uh, when she visited, uh, and when, let me think, it was in the 1950s, uh, she came round Wales, and uh, the guides were out lying in the streets, and so I had special permission from the police 
to go on my motorbike <laughs> and uh, film. So I was either just ahead of her or just behind her and took uh, the film of her uh, with the guides lining the road. So we had lots of uh, memories of that and the film was left at Benarion. I don't know whether they still got it mined, but uh, it was shown quite a lot up at Benarion. Um, what sort of skills did you get in your six or patrol and what have you taken forward into later life? Oh, well, working and doing good turns as much as is possible. International experience that you've had? Oh, plenty of international experiences, yes. I went to Belgium for the guides uh, to train there and I went to uh, Trinidad and took 10 guides with me to Trinidad. Um, let me think now. Went to the World Conference in Toronto and the World Conference in Sussex University. That was the first one that was held in this country. And then I was invited to go to the Caribbean, to Antigua, St. Kitts, um, Nevis, Anguilla and Montserrat. And that was training the adults in what guiding was all about because they belonged to us in the uh, UK. So they wanted to know what we did and we helped them to set up and to do things there. Uh, it, that was a great experience and do you know it's amazing the number of people from those countries that keep in contact now with me. A, a sinking day card from the Philippines, the chief commissioner there. This year, uh, you know, I'd almost, you might say, forgotten. <laughs> but it's lovely to have the greetings from different countries as we go along. Uh, I joined Brownies when in 1940, I think it was. Um, that was a lively brownie pack. But being wartime then, the trouble we had in guiding was that a lot of the leaders very soon had to leave and go into the forces as we were then at war. And so a lot of brownie packs and guide companies probably would have had to close temporarily because they were without leaders. And even today, we need more and more leaders for a different reason. But at that time, they were off to the war. So a lot of the brownie programme we what didn't... What do you have from guides and brownies? As a guide in a guide company, the fun, the good friends, the, the gang spirit, you know, of being with a whole crowd of your friends. Um, we had great fun. And the things I mentioned to Brownie, we were doing in guides in a different way. I loved marching because the rhythm and the music, uh, those are sort of things. In guides itself, it was wartime. And um, we had uh, the, the ladies of the various churches in that area ran a canteen for the forces. And our, invariably on our guide night, we were yanked in as extra pairs of hands to help either serving tea and refreshments or helping some of the injured soldiers that were coming there coming to help out. them write to family if they couldn't write or if they couldn't read letters, we'd read to them and generally help with any of their well-being in the forces canteen which was run in the church hall. And being a guide company that happened to meet on the same night on, on one of the, on these occasions, we would help the ladies of the churches in running all sorts of activities. And that tended to go to other things because being wartime we helped with um, uh, messenger services between the various other organisations. Some of the older guides helped during air raids uh, on bikes. They were rushing around with messengers from one to the other. They had to be very careful because of course it was very dangerous and then we'd help a lot with first aid. But in the guide company itself, it was the fun, it was the singing, it was acting, doing sort of skits and fun. And then the overall patrol activities that we'd had our own little patrol corner with its own box and treasures of the, of the patrol in it. And uh, we used to make up our own songs of the patrol or the company. And I think these are the things that always rem uh, reminded me. And then as you were getting a bit older, 
things were a little bit easier in the war, um, that we got together with other groups in the county, in the area, and joined forces with them doing such things as camping. And, uh, you know, it was then on a larger scale. And similarly, your districts, in some cases, because of people going to the forces, were disbanded and we were combined with another district. And even to this day, some of the people that were in guides with us, many, many years later, are still friendly and very close. And we laugh about the funny things we had. We had competitions for pitching a tent. Who could pitch it the quickest in the rightest way too? And uh, we had trophies for that, for, for camping. And the other thing I think the company I remember it was mainly, the, uh, particularly, the good fun, the laughter. And the Do you have any like specific exciting memories that happened? That what with guiding? Yeah. In, in guiding, not, yeah. not necessarily what. Oh yes, a whole string of things. <laughs> I think being part of a large organisation where, and I think the fun, although we have our own units and we plan our own things today and activities, I think, thing, in fact, many times later people have said to me, that was fun, because we did it as a large group, as a county. We've got a record, I think, in our county, haven't we, with all sorts of activities, like pageants and gang show for about 25 years I was involved with. Um, and then we had lots of pageants. And I must have been out of my small mind when I think that we do pageants with about 150 on the stage in St David's Hall and then a choir of about 150. Incidentally, Guiding was the first outside organisation that produced anything in St David's Hall, which we did. And thanks to one of our leaders, she named each room and that numbering of the rooms backstage, which was like a maze was taken up from guiding and used for, for St David's. Did, did you get any skills like through guiding that you've used later in life? And... Yes, the uh, broadcasting on television, the very first broadcast I ever did was as a Queen's Guide, and Queen, this was when Queen's Guide started, and because it was, I hit the press I suppose, that guiding had this wonderful achievement of a Queen's Guide badge, and the BBC rang and said, would I go for an interview on a programme called Junior Radio Record in BBC. But then a couple of years later, I ended up by doing BBC television news for the first woman that, woman that read it in Wales. But that was started as an interview with guiding. And it went on from there as my interest in broadcasting as well, and interviewing. Interviewing. <laughs> um, do you have any na uh, international experiences that really stand out in your um, well, probably the outstanding one was Austria, yeah. helping them to have fun and get on their feet after the war. And then the other one was five months in Australia, Ceylon, Papua New Guinea and uh, America on the way back. Yeah. That was completely an experience to be yeah. beheld. Lots of ideas came out of that too. Yeah. Where the Trefoil Guild, which by the way this is, our Trefoil Guild in the UK, people who've <laughs> laughingly retired from guiding but they're still doing lots of things. In Australia the Trefoil Guild would raise money to help the leaders buy their uniforms because money was a bit short mm -hmm. and I know guiding here if there's anyone in difficulty will help them towards it financially. This is what we did in Australia. Lots of other fun things too we did. We're brownie guys, we're brownie guys, we're here to age did you start guiding and where? In St James's Brownies when I was six. And what are your memories at that time? Cleaning cutlery, going uh, to Penarth under the uh, tunnel where the tunnels are now, uh, going to Kevnon with Brownies on the train and having a picnic in the fairy house. <laughs> what exciting moments have you had? Exciting moments? <gasps> lots, lots and lots. Um, probably one of the most exciting was when I went to New Zealand and I carried the Union flag on behalf of Great Britain when nine of us from Great Britain went on a visit to New Zealand. What skills did you get in your six or patrol 
And what did you take forwards into your later life and life in general? When I was patrol leader in Trinity Methodist Guides, I uh, learned how to deal with um, perhaps difficult people, would be the nicest way of putting it, and also to deal with all sorts of people, whether they were um, disabled or, or able-bodied. Um, I think probably um, a bit more tolerance uh, I learned then, that I could learn again now. I'm older. <laughs> At what age did you start guiding and where? I started when I was seven as a brownie and I was in Star Street, which was the 8th Cardiff, which no longer exists, I'm afraid. What are your memories of that time? Being very little, with lots of big brownies around me, but I was very lucky, was my big sister, was Tony Owl. What exciting moments have you had? Um, I think the most exciting and honoured moment I had was to be asked to become County Commissioner. And what skills did you get in your six or patrol? And what did you take forward into your later life and life in general? Um, I think things like I can still do semaphore. I still remember doing, can still do the third verse of God Save the Queen. And I think, um, I can't think of the other thing. <laughs> um, things like that that go through you with life. Um, silly things that you used to learn, like the patron saints and things like that. All their dates and their flags and where they're from. All those sort of things have gone right from brownies all the way through.